CataractCoach.com, white cataract phaco puncture. So i got a resident surgeon successfully managing this intumescent lens. So we're going to speed the whole video up to about three times normal speed so I can show you the whole video. Now this is an intumescent cataract, so it's fluid filled. If you look at it, it's not so yellowish or brownish. It actually has a slight really white or bluish tint even in the periphery. So in the center of the nucleus, yes, there's some degree of nuclear sclerosis. That's why it's slightly yellow in the center, but look at the periphery. Now try pan blue dye staining going inside the eye, putting that around. You don't have to use an air bubble. You can just use it regularly. But injecting the tripan blue dye is obviously important, and we're tapping the center of the lens to see how pressurized is that capsular bag. In a lot of these cases, you can get a very pressurized capsular bag, and I think this one is pressurized. So now washing out the blue dye, put a little anesthetic inside the eye, and here comes the viscoelastic. So the viscoelastic is going to be a dispersive viscoelastic. There it goes, filling it up, getting a nice high pressure. And look, touching the lens capsule, you see it's really bouncy. That lens is pressurized. It's not a dense cataract. So we're going to make the main incision here. And we're going to buzz in with the phaco probe. Now, the other option here is, of course, you can do a double rexus technique, make a little baby rexus through a pair of these while keeping the AC highly pressurized. So we're going to make a nice incision here. Let me just guide the resident to make sure it goes in beautifully. I want a good tunnel length. And we're going to use the phaco probe. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a very high infusion pressure. So I can get that infusion pressure up to about 90 millimeters of mercury. So that's high. Or bottle height if you're using an, an uh, older machine, at least 120 um, centimeters, 130 centimeters. And we're going to use the FACO probe. You don't need a lot of flow. You don't need a lot of power. Very little power is needed to, to, to puncture that lens cap from the center there. So... Just preparing a few things here, getting ready for it. Here it comes. And so going in, FACO Pro going bevel down, and you're going to barely tap into position three. I'm just lifting up the iris here, make the patient out of reverse pupillary block. This patient is also a little bit myopic. We want to avoid any issues there. So we'll tent that iris up. There you go. And that helps with a little bit of the reverse pupillary block. So aiming the probe right in the center of the nucleus, bevel down, barely buzz in. There it goes. Now keep the probe in the eye. So important. Why? Because you want that high infusion. And now we're going to try with the other hand. I'm going to help out here. We're going to get a little rexus done. So keeping the infusion in the eye. Oh, didn't quite work. So what we can do is put the viscoelastic in. Luckily, it's not running out. We were able to decompress the bag enough. So now we'll grab that. And we just want to make a baby rexus here. It doesn't matter if it's centered or not. We'll fix all that. Don't worry. So get this rexus done. That's enough of an opening. And don't worry that it's not centered. We're going to center all this up in, in good time. So now we can put the eye probe in the eye. It's pretty soft. Remember, it's not a dense cataract. And just aspirate out all this material. Really just take it out. And you'll see, again, this is a younger patient. Look at the eyelashes. There are no gray eyelashes. And this is an intumescent cataract. Very soft. It's just fluid filled. The cortex has largely liquefied and opacified. And so that all comes up pretty easy. Look at that, no faker probe at all, just the IA probe. So there are many ways of doing these white cataracts. We've talked about this many times here. We have a whole subcategory. If you're just watching these videos on YouTube, that's okay. But actually, you'll be so much better served if you go to cataractcoach.com, go to the actual website, because then it's organized by categories, much better than you have here on YouTube. And you can go find all the white cataract videos, all the intumescent videos. So I encourage you to check that out. Plus, of course, you can subscribe to our email. We'll send you a free video every day in, the, in your email. So taking out the last bit of it here, just taking your time. This is not too difficult to do or to remove. And now you're wondering, what are we going to do with that e the smaller eccentric uh, rexus? Well, we'll fix that up. So we can enlarge that rexus, but let's do it after we put the lens in the eye, because that's a big enough opening that we can put the lens in there. So fill the capsule bag here with our viscoelastic. And then now here comes um, the lens. We'll put the lens there. That'll be a single piece acrylic lens. The resident's going to load this lens up here. This patient had just a, um, a cataract for, for, no un, for an unknown reason, no trauma or anything of that nature. But certainly we can help the patient a lot. Remember one thing to, re to check out on the patient as well on the pre-op exam, does the patient have any sensory exotropia? This patient has a retrobulbar block, so the eye is pretty, pretty frozen. 
but this patient had a little bit of sensory exotropy because the white cataract was present for almost a year and the patient didn't have surgery. So you got to warn the patient they're going to have some post-op diplopia, which should resolve within the first couple weeks after surgery. So here comes the lens. Let's get that lens right inside that small little capsule opening and get it in the capsule bag. And now, there we go, push that in nice and easy. Now we know where we want to enlarge the rexus. So temporarily there in the subincisional area, it's pretty good. But let's get those little Van Ness scissors, little baby scissors, and we can nick the capsule one direction or the other. I'm kind of giving the resident some guidance here. Try and nick it maybe over there. And then you can just enlarge it. So instead of, you can use the cystoma instead of the Van Ness scissors. But now grab that little nicked area and continue the rexus, and you'll get a very nice rexus out of it. And now you can enlarge this rexus to whatever size you want. So again, grabbing it with the forceps and pulling it. And if you don't get it still, okay, get the cystitone back again and maybe nick it a little bit more. Just get a little nick in the capsule is all you need so that you can grab that. There you go. That'll be a lot easier. And this can be grabbed, and then the rexus can be enlarged to an appropriate size. There it is. Look at that. Much better. So now we've got a nice, reasonable capsule rexus to overlap that optic. It looks pretty darn clean. We can take off any other loose ends there. And that looks fantastic for this patient. Now, don't go crazy about trying to really polish the heck out of this capsule bag. Get as much cortex as you can, obviously. We want to minimize the inflammatory load for the patient in the post-op period. But these types of intumescent cataracts, oftentimes the capsule is scarred up and you're unable to fully remove that. So try your best going in here. Again, trying to polish up and get as much as you can, but don't damage the tissues. And remember, a young patient getting an IOL, if the patient's 30 years old, let's say, what's the chance this patient's going to need a YAG capsulotomy in the first year? Really high. I mean, you're talking 80, 90%, maybe even more. So don't worry about doing a YAG capsulotomy. You're going to have to do one anyway. And so when you're a resident and you're a little early on the learning curve, it's perfectly fine not to go cra crazy about polishing up that capsule bag. This is a beautiful outcome. Remember, patients concerned with the delta, the difference between the before and after. Patients start off with a hand motion or light perception cataract is going to end up with a beautiful vision. So it's much, much better to give the patient 99% perfect of an outcome and no risk and no complication, no broken bag, than to try to go for 100% and break the capsule bag or damage things, etc. Because remember, for a young patient too, this lens has to last the patient's lifetime and this surgery is going to affect the way the patient sees every day for the next 50, 60, 70 years, maybe. Who knows? So check all the incisions sealed up beautifully. That's a great job. Thank you for watching. I sincerely appreciate it.